Hello and welcome to an edition of Tuesday Talks. Uh, today we are meeting with Mike Splann. Um, he is a dear, dear friend of mine. We are actually meeting on uh, Tuesday, but we're not going to post this until Wednesday uh, out of respect for Blackout Tuesday for solidarity of Black Lives Matter and bringing awareness um, to what's going on in the world around us right now. So if you're watching this, I'm aware it's not Tuesday when you're watching this, but um, Tuesday Talks will continue. And I'm happy to welcome Mike. Mike, welcome to Tuesday Talks. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I was so happy when you asked me. Well, you're, the, um, you're somebody who is very important to me. Um, and I've watched you, I can literally say I've watched you grow into a man. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm yeah. very uh, humbled by your growth and by your spiritual uh, example. Um, so tell us a little bit about Thank Mike. You. Tell me some. Yeah, well, well, first and foremost, I, I echo and, and say that right back to you. You are somebody who is um, important to me too and has been a part of my you know, growth in faith from uh, very early on, uh, right, right in the beginning, I would say. So um, yeah, so very excited to, to share my story of faith. Yeah, so um, I don't know, when I was like thinking and reflecting on kind of telling, uh, you know, telling my story of faith and uh, my, my, the, the way I've grown in faith over the years, I was reminded of a homily I heard a few weeks back. I was watching, a, uh, obviously, a live streamed mass. I wasn't there in person, but um, a priest, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Father Mike Schmidt, was talking about, um, he was talking about, you know, exiles and how we're, we're kind of exiles right now from the church because we're not in the church and we're away from the sacraments and we're away from the priest. And, um, you know, one of the readings, which when he said it, uh, reminded me of this reading and I love it. It's from first Peter and it, it says, um, always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within you. Now I'll say it again, cause it's so important. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within you. Uh, such a good reading. And, you know, when I was thinking back on that, it's like, what, what has been sort of my reasons for being Catholic um, for my whole life, my entire life? How have those reasons maybe changed and, you know, grown over time? And, you know, I think back on, you know, I've never not been Catholic. Um, and I have my mom to thank for that, for sure. And, um, and my grandma as well. And, you know, my, my family, because I was born and raised Catholic. I mean, I, I've never not been going to mass. I've been going to mass since I was a baby. And, and um, that's always just, it's just been, it just has been, you know, it's, it's a habit, you might say, in some ways, you know, of, of being at mass. And Father Mike Schmitz the other day was talking about, you know, when you're able to go back to mass, why would you do it? What is your reason? You know, be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within you. And as I sort of started growing um, in faith, and this happened, really, I can say the first time this started to happen was when I first went to the Christian Leadership Institute um, with yourself and met some of these great spiritual Catholic mentors like yourself, um, like Dave Stagliano, somebody who we've you know shared that, um, as a mentor. Um, the reason the reason for being Catholic started to change. And, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an immediate change. It was a growth. It was a going to CLI, then becoming, you know, a part of the CLI P staff and regular staff and being part of the diocesan youth group and continuously taking on more and more of an active role in the church and in the church community. Um, and why, like, why do that? You know, I, I think back on this, like, why, give all that time and do all those things. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, benefits to it in terms of like, you meet a lot of people and um, you know, you, you make friends and you have these mentors and it's great, but like, but why actually do it? And you know, the reason is always Jesus Christ. And I learned that way back then. And that's only been, you know, growing in me since then um, going to NCYC. And then eventually I ended up at Providence College where um, I met the fantastic Dominican friars. And I went into 
I went into Providence uh, trying to study business management, right? Which I ended up doing, of course, I, I majored in business management, but early on, I, I, I wanted to also take theology classes and take more and more theology classes and become a minor and then eventually become a theology major and actually get a degree, a bachelor's degree in theology. And why would you do that? Well, be prepared to give a reason for the hope of the Virginia. I, I wanted to know the reason, like why, why be Catholic? And it's because I've met Jesus. I've met him through people like yourself, through the people I've known um, growing as I've grown in faith through the Dominicans um, at PC, through the other people I've met at PC, like I've met him and I love him. And that's why, you know, that's the reason. And there's so many other reasons too. I mean, um, why be Catholic? Because it's true. Um, and, you know, being a theology major, we, you know, we start, we, we, we start on the basis of like, this is true and what's true about it. And, and what is the actual, and what's not true. And, um, but what the church says is true. Um, and that's why I'm Catholic. And that's why I continue to grow in the faith. That's why, um, I'm ha excited to be back at mass now. I mean, we were just talking before we started the recording, like, I'm back at mass now and this is fantastic because this is this is Christ and this is his church and we should be excited um and why go back why continue to be catholic why continue to grow deeper in in the catholic faith it's like because Jesus is real because what he said is true and because this is his church um and yeah i mean those are the most important things in my life and so uh, very grateful to to have my faith and to be able to share it. Amen. That's a beautiful testament. Wow, it's <laughs> you really started out right in my heart. That's like, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, yeah. I am always encouraged um, to to listen um, more frequently now than I ever have. Um, yeah, just to absolutely. our our young church, um, you know, and. Um, we're maybe about 10 years apart, um, but at the very least, um, as, a, as older adults, we owe it to the next generation because you guys are going to be leading us forward into the next steps of what we have to do. So I don't know, I know at one yeah. point you were uh, discerning uh, potentially the priesthood. I don't know where you yeah. are in that. Are you, is that still on the table or are you just kind of like, mm, maybe still family life or where, where do you think your vocation's leading you? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's still on the table, um, you know, as, as things stand right now. And um, I've had the, the, the privilege of knowing so many wonderful priests uh, over the years back in the Albany diocese. I, I knew so many fantastic priests uh, growing up. Uh, was able to learn and, and be mentored by them. And then of course, going to Providence, um, all of the Dominican friars are, they're, they're a fantastic and, and, and magnificent order. Um, and so I've had the privilege of knowing many wonderful priests. And, um, you know, I was just reading, um, I was reading Pope Benedict and Cardinal Sarah's um, new book on the priesthood um, and about what a wonderful gift uh, the priesthood is to the church and that it's it's Jesus's gift to the church that he gave um, and you know, how, how wonderful and sacred that is. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still on the table. You know, you have to, you have to take, take things one step at a time. Um, I'm not, I'm not rushing anything. I'm just trying to uh, figure out how, you know, what, what the, what the way is that the Lord is calling me to love him and to serve him. So um yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say the, the biggest thing to always remember like, about discernment um, and something that I've been reminded of recently um, in, in some of the conversations I've had, which is like, above all else, like you're, you're called to, to joy, you know, no matter what your actual like, um, no, no matter what like the vocation of your life is, um, you're called to, you're called to happiness. Like the, the, the Lord's not going to call you to anything that's going to make you unhappy right um and this is so important uh i think to remember and important for for me to remember um because you can get wrapped up in you know so many of the 
oh, but I'd be so happy here, or I'd be so happy doing this. And I'd be, it's like, it's like, you're going to be happy. <laughs> that, that's, that's like, that's a non-negotiable. And you're going to be happy here, but you're going to be like infinitely happier in heaven too. Um, so like your, your vocation is to happiness. So right now I'm trying to uh, figure out what it is um, that would make me happy. Um, and yeah, I mean, we'll go from there. Do you think that there is a true calling between happiness and joy? I mean, there, there's such a, a juxtaposition between fleeting happiness, right? But then yeah. there's something that is internal that brings you real joy, you know, and I have found that yeah. to be true. Um, I found joy in the Eucharist. I found joy in yeah. the community. I found joy in the rosary. I found joy in spending time with Mother Mary. Um, yeah. Kind of just, yeah. um, but when I'm doing things that make me happy, they're like, they're fleeting or like they're, they're minute, you know? Um, I, yeah. I find that sometimes chasing after happiness um, leads me empty. Um, have yeah. you had something similar like that when it comes to your true joy sure. and your happiness? Sure. Absolutely. Um, and it's something so, you know, the, the concept that there can be a difference between happiness slash pleasure, I'll say, and joy is so countercultural. And we're told, you know, we're told all the time that, you know, if this makes you happy, like if, if, if you're happy doing that, like keep doing it. Like, why not? Why not? It's like, well, there is something deeper because joy, joy itself, you know, this is what, this is what Thomas Aquinas would say. Um, you know, joy is a capital J, you know, he wouldn't say that, but I'm saying that, but what his point is, is that, you know, God is joy, you know, God himself is joy. There is a perfect form of joy that exists in the universe and it is God. Now there are, there are things that, that can make us happy, um, that aren't God, but it's not, it, it's, unless it's of God and from God, it can't be that, that, that fullness of joy there. I had a Dominican describe it to me this way. Um, you know, the, the difference between happiness and joy and, and you know, true joy when that joy brings you to tears. And you think about like, you think about, for example, like a husband who, you know, turns to see his new bride walking down the aisle and like bursts into tears. This is what the Dominican said, you know, in, in his experience, he's seen and like, that's joy. That's joy because that is a worldly manifestation of the father's love on earth for you individually. Um, so that's, that's joy. And other things can certainly make you happy and, and the world want, and, and the Lord wants you to be happy, right? Like, you know, going to Chick-fil-A makes me very happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, oh, seriously, I mean, you guys, think, they're fire. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and, you know, and the Lord, the Lord delights in that, you know, uh, he, he wants you to have your spicy Lord delights in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Seriously, you know, he, he, he wants you to have that spicy chicken sandwich and that that'll make you happy. But that's not gonna, that's not giving you joy. You know, he's like, he's like this, this joy, like joy is, is from me Yeah. to, to live with me and to walk, um, to walk with me is is actual joy so yeah and i use the chick-fil-a as an example there are bad examples of fleeting happiness too you know things that are, are sinful that do to their own right make us happy quote unquote you know but yeah i mean the difference between happiness and joy really truly exists and um and it can be good and bad and um but it should be certainly recognized and it is so countercultural for sure. Um, something I wanted to ask you about, and I don't know if it was something that I had, I guess, planned, but it was something that I just sparked in my heart. Um, yep. Would you do me the honor of talking about your relationship with your mom? Um, she sure. is such a sweet and wonderful lady, 
And um, <laughs> I, I think that um, moms like her maybe need to be highlighted. Um, so you don't have to go yeah, too deep I agree with you. you're most comfortable, but I love her. Um, and every interaction <laughs> I've ever had with her has been. Uh, so can you just talk a little bit about your relationship? Yeah. With Gosh, yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, my mom is a is a fantastic person. She she really is. She's a wonderful human being. And um, so, my mom and I have a very unique relationship. I think you know, unlike unlike many others. And and we, see, I mean, obviously, every every family is unique in their own way. But my mom's a single mom, and I'm an only child. And you know, my parents. Um, split up when I was very, very young. And I, I don't have too many, you know, memories of, of them being together. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to talk about my dad too much, but just to, I guess, present the, the differences, you know, my, my dad has since um, been in new relationships, new marriages, new things, he new jobs, he's, he's had his own life, and he's moved on. And um, unfortunately, it hasn't been in my life for, for quite some time. And, you know, my mom, on the other hand, um, you know, talk about, talk, talk about grace and talk about a vocation, you know, um, when you think of a vocation, you know, sometimes it, it, it's often labeled like, you know, marriage, religious life, you have these like categories. Um, but for her, and she would say this, this isn't me putting words in her mouth, you know, her true calling was always to be a mother. And she has, um, she has quite literally I mean, given her entire life to being my mom and uh, to to loving and supporting me. And, uh, but, you know, we have we have quite an interesting relationship. We talk about this sometimes how, you know, a lot of parents and child, you know, kids go to their mom, kids go to their mom for advice. Um, and sometimes the other way around. My mom a lot of times comes to me for advice um, <laughs> on things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, she is such a really beautiful and incredible witness to motherhood and the beauty of um, motherhood and and what a gift that that is from God to um, you know there's 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 no love like that of a, of a mother and child so uh, she's a beautiful witness to that life um, and I think that you're right that mothers like her should be recognized a lot more and, and don't get um, enough enough recognition because um you know she's never you know been with with other people she's never tried to remarry and kind of go out on her own it's a it's been a selfless sacrifice um on her part so yeah very very grateful for her she's a she's a wonderful person i appreciate you asking that because um happy to happy to talk about that i had um i had a conversation with her um and then I'd, I'd written her a card or a, a letter that just mm -hmm. pretty much said, do you understand the gift of your son? Um, you know, <laughs> you, you, are, um, you are amazing as a young man and as a, a person of faith. Um, as I mentioned, you are very yeah. encouraging to me. And that's why I do these, um, these Tuesday talks is that everybody um, are like, oh, Rebecca, can you pray for me? Or, hey, Rebecca, you know, I, I really appreciate what you said, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I can't be that person unless other people are that to me. So, th like, yeah. these opportunities are me to kind of say, hey, this is this person. This is why they're so special to me. They are a puzzle piece of who I yeah. am. And I couldn't be who I am if your mom didn't raise you to be who you are. So, it's yeah. like, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's it is a ripple effect. Uh, and and that's another great point about you know she's given me the greatest gift I have which is my faith and there's nobody else who is responsible for that right because I mean yeah I attribute I attribute my faith to you know to CLI and CYC and then Providence College primarily but if that foundation wasn't there and that root wasn't there nothing else would have happened so, you know, she, she is the reason for that, um, for sure. So, you know, all the, all of the good that I ever have done and could do, I, I definitely owe to her. So. Well, thank you for sharing your mom's story. I think she's a wonderful sure. so. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know this question's on the docket and I kind of 
kept my notes. Um, mm -hmm. What is um, your relationship? This sounds crazy, but this is how I think we kind of get together. What is your relationship with Jesus and how has that grown as you have grown? Yeah, um, what, a, what a fantastic question. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's, it's difficult to sort of pinpoint because, um, you know, I think when you're at different stages in your, your life and particularly your growth with faith, um, God takes different forms to you at, at different times. Um, you know, I know for me going through high school without a father, um, you tend to, you, you, you tend to look at God as more of a father figure and more of a, you know, that, that person you go to for, you know, when you need things like, you know, just like you'd normally go to your, to your parents, you know, Hey, I need money. I'm going to go in here. Like, I'm going to the movies and you get $20. Um, you know, you go to God, like I, I need help on this test. Like I, you know, and, and that's kind of all he's there for. He's like the divine gift giver in, in some senses. And, and, um, but yeah, how has that changed? I, you know, I, in the, you know, in the end, it's all about the, the, the person of Jesus Christ first. Um, when I was graduating from Providence College, and this is kind of a, I think, a, a beautiful manifestation of kind of how my relationship with Jesus has changed and the most important part about it. Um, I walked across the stage and I got my diploma. And as I was walking down, um, there was a Dominican there who's a professor and he was one of my professors. I had him for multiple theology classes. He's by far one of the most brilliant, most intelligent, smartest people. Um, I, we talk some, we joke sometimes in my friend group about how we'll one day be at his canonization um, <laughs> in St. Peter's Square. Uh, but yeah, he's a fantastic Dominican. And as I was walking back, I had my diploma in hand and, you know, he stopped he stopped me and he just reached out and he grabbed my hand and he just said, go with God. And that's all he said. That's all he said. And that was like the first time that day that I ever was feeling a little bit emotional was when he said that. And so what does it, what does it mean to go with God and what has Providence college in particular taught me about that and about that relationship? It's like, it's a friendship. It, it's a, it, it's a friendship. And, we're so lucky as Catholics that we get to experience it the way that we do to, to be able to walk up to the altar and, and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your best friend right there who wants, who wants to be with you and wants to be your best friend. And what, is, what does it mean to go with God? Invite him along. What would you do with any of your friends? Um, I think about some of the spiritual directors I've had over the years and they're like, well, and back to what I was talking about of, you only ask God when you need something. That's where I was. And think about the friends you have. What if they only came to you when you, they needed something from you? You, they, you would think that they're not being good friends. Um, so what does it mean to go with God and more, and more specifically to go with Christ? Invite him along the way. Whatever you're doing, invite him. Jesus, I'm going for a run. Want to come with me? Um, you know, he says, I'm, I'm going out to meet some friends for drinks in downtown Boston. Like, come with us, like, <laughs> come join us, come be a part of that. Um, I, I had a, you know, I, I, God isn't above blessing a conversation over beers. I can tell you that, but, um, you know, it's like invite him along for the journey every step of the way. It's a friendship. Um, and that's how, that's how my relationship has changed. It's gone from a, Lord, this is what I need. Can you give this to me? To like, yeah, I need these things. But also here are the happy things. Here are the happy moments in my life. Walk with right. me during those. Like be with me through that. Like let's share that together. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a friendship. And you have to be constantly asking yourself, am I being a good friend? just like you would with any friendship. Um, because Jesus will always be a good friend to you. But like, are you being a good friend back? Um, so yeah, that's what I, I, that's the best answer I could give. I know it's kind of confusing. Wow. Well, but... That's, you know what, that's, that's a beautiful answer. That is the best answer I've <laughs> ever heard. So 
<laughs> so usually um my my relationship with the lord is that kind of like for me he's a big brother right yeah. so mm -hmm. i never had a brother um and then i ended up um getting brother-in-laws um and so that was always exciting um but they are both um uh, they're just they're they're just otherwise engaged in other things so i don't get to talk to them all the time um yeah. but i imagine uh, things I would ask of the Lord um, in a brotherly way, uh, kind of like, you know, keep me out of trouble. <laughs> Put your arm around my shoulder and your hand yeah. around my mouth. <laughs> like, like, watch yeah, out for me because left, left by my own devices that it's a wrap, you know, and um, I need yeah. someone to kind of say, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, absolutely. And, and, I think like when I think about, you know, Christ and especially the fact that he became human, like he wants to take those forms in our life. You know, like you said, you never have a big brother. Like I said, like I, I didn't have a father, you know, so where, what voids do we have that he can fill? Um, you know, it's like, it's like, I, I'm reminded of um, the first part of John's gospel. It's a, it's a cool part where, um, you know, all the other gospels start out with like a birth narrative or, you know, some other kind of, you know, opening to, you know, Jesus was born and here's the nativity and, and, or here's the annunciation, the visitation, all these things like John's gospel is completely different. It starts out with like some crazy theological blurb. And then it just starts with him being an adult and he's being followed. And the people are like, you know, people are following him like i think this is jesus of nazareth i think this yo i think that's the guy they're like yo that's the guy they're like yo that's the guy and jesus turns and he just like turns around and he's like what do you seek like what are you looking for what are you looking for and you know they they answer like where are you staying is their answer which i've always thought is so interesting and funny it's like what do you seek well where are you staying because, because that's the thing, wherever, wherever you are, like, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to go, yeah. you know? And Jesus, it's funny because he asks the question, right? Knowing that he is the answer, you know? He's asking, he's almost asking, like, I am the answer. I have the answers. Are my answers the answers to your question? You know? Um, so it's it's that the relationship takes whatever form you need he's there to fill whatever void you have so um when you say like your big brother like that makes total sense to me so um as we're kind of nearing um i want to kind of um wield it into the fun zone um i want to ask yeah. i want to ask a little bit and it's something that um i've never really asked about i just enjoy um sure. but um can you tell me a little bit about your uh professional side job sure yeah so i've been um yeah so i've been djing um professionally or amateurly whatever you really <laughs> want to call it i um gosh since i was like 15 16 um yeah and it's been fantastic i've gotten to you know move from like doing birthday parties and school dances eventually into the wedding industry um you know which has been super fun and um weddings are fantastic and i've been able to work with you know in my opinion the best djs in the area um and, and learn from them and you know then also uh into college able to do some bars and some clubs even the radio at school so um yeah like it's a super deep love for music something i also get from my mom uh to, to hype her up a little bit more um <laughs> but you know uh yeah i just i I've, I've always loved music and so i taught myself um taught myself how to do that how, you know how to dj how to make mixes so to speak and um gosh it's a it's a it's a ton of fun and i've had some honestly i'm blessed to have some incredible memories of so many wonderful functions I've DJed and um you know all over the place like I said weddings to backyard college parties or even basement college parties I have some fantastic memories of all all kinds of them so yeah it's been fun do you think that um as you're growing um 
you know, into, into your faith and, and wherever you end up walking with the Lord moving forward. Do you think that's going to be somewhat of a giant puzzle piece in your life moving forward? Or is it just going to be like, yeah, I did that when I was younger, you know, is that going to fit somewhere? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, that's, that's a great question. Logistically speaking, in terms of whatever I, you know, end up doing with my life, will I always be DJing? I have no idea. Um, in terms of, in terms of, you know, um, will music always be a part of my life? I can say absolutely yes, no matter what. Uh, music will definitely always be a part of my life um, to some capacity. I mean, I, cause I not only DJ, but you know, I, I, I play the guitar. I, I like to, um, you know, it, it play music whatever way I, I can. So, you know, that will certainly always be a part of my life, but yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess, a big, I guess it is a big question mark in terms of, you know, what way that will, um, I guess come to fruition in my life. Yeah. I don't know, but, uh, music will always be there one way or the other. I think that's a very smart idea because that's a very prayerful way, you know, no matter how it is, you know, it really is a way to share the love of the Lord. And I mean, regardless of lyrics or content or whatever, I mean, there's, there's like a beat, um, that is, uh, recognizable, um, within each of us. Um, and there's something yeah. that, you know, the Lord gives to us in those moments. And so the way that you can draw a crowd together and uh, get everybody, you know, uh, on the same page and just full of joy, right? Back to yeah, you. absolutely. Um, that's a gift. No, I, absolutely. And it's, um, thank you. It, it is a gift. And I, I've been happy to be able to share it um, with so many people over the years and um, continue to do so. I am still, I'm still out there and and looking to continue doing it for foreseeable future. So uh, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you do that. So thank you for using gifts yeah. and talents. Well, of course, thank you. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, sure. And I just wanna, you know, before I, before I kind of sign us off, um, I just wanna uh, tell you that you have been impactful um, on my, only child. Um, I, I don't think that you guys ever met face to face. Maybe once or twice briefly, but I don't, not, never at length. Right. So, um, she knows you, um, because I keep in contact with you. Um, yeah. and, uh, you obviously know of her because, you know, right. I, I'm mom, right? So I share stuff yeah. about her. <laughs> um, but I want to say thank you. Uh, to you for being uh, an example, um, for being someone who is open about your faith mm -hmm. and not afraid to share it. Um, and I want to say thank you to you for giving me hope as a mom. got to hold it yeah. together. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, you growing up the way that you have and the love and the devotion that you have for your mom and the love and the devotion that you have for the Lord is beautiful. Um, and Thank it's you. something that I want for my daughter. And um, I always uh, encourage her to consider religious life. Um, and she always gives me the eye roll yeah. as teenagers do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I, I, I feel like she has something special um, and uh, yeah. watching your growth has given me a new hope um, that maybe she will struggle and maybe she will go through some trials and tribulations, but that down the road, she'll come out and say, oh yeah, you know what? Mom, mom was there and mom gave me yeah. the foundation that I needed. So I'm, I'm grateful for you um, well, for living you. life courageously and bravely and not yeah. um, being afraid to share that. So thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I, I, I want to also just write back at you. Thank you for um, being courageous enough to, to raise your child with the faith and in particular to um, cultivate an openness to religious life and, you know, within, within our youth, because, you know, not everybody has that calling, but 
something that makes it a lot easier is when th there's an openness in their family and in their community to at least asking that question because everybody should at least ask that question. So um, thank you for, on behalf of the church, not that I have any authority <laughs> to thank you on behalf of the church, but just like um, as a fellow member of the Catholic church, like thank you for raising your daughter in the faith. <laughs> I mean, that's, um, it's, it's monumentally important and um, the Lord loves you for it and thanks you for it, so. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for joining us today, Mike. Um, thank you for having me. It's yeah, been fun. I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful and very humbled. Um, so. Um, I'm not in college anymore. I don't get to have theological conversations regularly. <laughs> So, you know what um, if, if if you're really bored on a friday night and you just you need <laughs> to have these conversations you know let me know um yeah i mean there is there isn't much going else there isn't much else going on here in boston on friday nights these days so yeah that's um, true well it's on it's on the up and up it'll it'll happen soon it is yeah. you're right you're right it will it certainly will well, thank you everybody um, for tuning in to Tuesday Talks and um, hoping that as the summer months continue, um, we are blessed with warmer weather and uh, more friendship and more community. And thanks again for joining us, Mike. Thank you.